And it is therefore important that we have the Joseph anointing dealing with the economy, dealing with starvation, while we're also attending to the rebellion in our hearts against God. In actual fact, you can fix the economy, but if your heart is rebellious against God, you will wind up in the same place. Because most of the problems we have today are because of our rebellion against God. And many of you will testify, many of you can testify that when we received our independence as black people in South Africa, and we had uh, the right to vote in 1994, we thought we were entering our land of promise. I don't want to ask a painful question of how is it so far, you know. It's a very painful question if you think about it. How is it? My wife and I were listening to <laughs> one of the ministers addressing people somewhere in a village in Limpombo campaigning for the ruling party. And we were laughing. We were driving and we were laughing. Do you know what he mentioned as a major, major achievement in this era of democracy social grants social grants he, he he went on and on that life is no longer the same for a black person in south africa and he went on and on about imalia God as an achievement for a black man since the dawn of democracy and he knew, and I told my wife, that he, he strategically chose to, 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 to address people in the village. Because you cannot, buy, you, you cannot sell that message to, to, to people like you. You can't sell that message to people like you. And for us, beloved, after so many years, since 94, to actually rave about Imali Akor as an achievement, since we took over no 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 no. something is seriously wrong and i'll tell you what went wrong what went wrong is a situation where we thought political independence is everything when people are not liberated spiritually because a person who is politically free or even economically free but without spiritual liberation that person is capable of anything Capable of anything. They have no moral boundaries. And, and the, 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 what we are beginning to discover that there is a relationship between morality and prosperity. That, that's what we are beginning to discover right now. If you, if, you, if you remove moral bounds, the Bible says <laughs> when people are set loose, when people are cast off restraint, they perish. Hallelujah. We, 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 our daughter, uh, second daughter, Essa. Essa means blessed, and, and, and it comes from that verse in, in, in Proverbs uh, chapter 18, where there is no vision, people perish. And then the other version or variation of that scripture, when people are cast off restraint, when, when, when people have no boundaries, they perish. But blessed is the person, Essa means blessed, but blessed is a person who puts their trust in God. Hallelujah. And, and that is what we're missing as South African. You see, uh, 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 this, this will sound controversial. Please, please uh, uh, pray about this. It's amazing that even if you are doing other things wrong, but if you have a certain level of the fear of the Lord in your heart, things don't fall apart as they would for someone who has no fear of the Lord but is the choice of the people. <laughs> Are you hearing me? It's quite interesting that during the apartheid years we were not forced into a place where we could not pray. In actual fact, it's quite funny that prayer was allowed in schools. That's ironical. Prayer was allowed in schools. I've told you the story. When I was training as a medical doctor in King Edward, 
There was no surgical procedure that could start without a prayer. Even an unsaved surgeon will stand with a scalpel in hand and say, Sister, we're about to operate, pray. Every procedure, it was known. And I, 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 th th that really touched my heart. I was a young man, but I was amazed that even people who, are, who, are, who, who will classify as ungodly, they value the power of prayer. There was revival in our schools. There were SCMs, and, 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 and there used to even be a period. <laughs> there was a period called religion, religion, religious education. I remember a book called Unkulunkulu Lutando. Remember that book? It was part of the curriculum under the apartheid government. Under the apartheid government. We were taught the fear of the Lord during apartheid years. And democracy came. We took over. And when we took over, all of a sudden prayer is no longer relevant. We need to accommodate devil worshippers because they get offended when you pray. Yeah, we need to accommodate Sangomas because they get offended every time you guys run SCMs in our schools. Eh? Do you remember SCMs? Yeah. We used to have that. Remember, Mangosut. Those were places of, it was known that these were places of revival. Ongoy, Siswe. She, she, she was leading us in prayer. Those are products, my, my, my sister Ulungi. Those are products of Ongoya. There were massive revivals. These guys used to go up to Zimbabwe in the 80s preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. Because it was known. In actual fact, it, it was a shame to graduate from university without receiving Christ. Because universities, especially black universities, those were places where the Holy Ghost would come in power. And students were slain. People came not only with degrees from universities, but they came with Jesus and filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. And those were times during the apartheid years. Are you hearing me, beloved? So I want you to understand that the issue, sometimes we, 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 we overstate political freedom. Many times at the expense of spiritual freedom. And I pray that you be not blinded to the significance of spiritual freedom. So we need Jeremiah's. Let me tell you something about Jeremiah. Jeremiah will announce that the Babylonians are coming and there's going to be 70 years of captivity in Babylon because of your rebellion against God. And then the nation of Judah used to persecute Jeremiah because they didn't like that message. They hated that message. And I believe that you and I are supposed to be the Jeremiahs of our time. Because there is a seven year tribulation that is coming. And the nations must be warned. And people don't like that message. Are you hearing me? And you cannot therefore decide just because people don't like that message, you are not going to preach it. Because the Bible tells us that if you don't warn them, their blood is in your hands. I pray that you may discharge yourself of people's blood. Stand for the truth even if truth is not popular. Stand for the truth even if people don't want to hear it. Now, they, 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 there is something about Jeremiah that I want us to explore. Because Jeremiah is a type that you ought to be. Hallelujah. This is the season of the bold and the faithful. Amen. No, not the bold and the, and the beautiful, but the bold... <laughs> The bold and the faithful. Praise God. And, and, and you, need, you need to be strong in the season. Jeremiah is referred to as a weeping prophet. Because horrible things happened to him. While he was warning the nation of Judah. Of the coming captivity. And his own family disowned him at some point. You can read about that in Jeremiah chapter 11 verses 21 to 23. His family turned on him. His neighbors. He speaks of Anna Thought. A place where he was born and raised. And that place turned. You know, can you imagine when you even lose your family members? Be simply because you are telling them, listen, there is a government of the Antichrist that is about to form. 
and he will enslave you for seven years if you don't repent. Repent. That was the message. In his case, 70 years of captivity. In our case, the message is there is an antichrist government coming. Repent. Praise the name of Jesus. Have you ever asked yourself, how come that message is so scarce in our churches? Why? Because it's a Jeremiah type of message that usually prophets don't want to proclaim. Hallelujah. So that's the message. So his family turned on him and his neighbors turned on him. He was whipped and detained several times. You can read about that in Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 1 to 2. He was persecuted by authorities and kings. He was persecuted by society. And his message was also even undermined and ridiculed by his own fellow prophets. That's another big one. Sometimes we gauge the relevance of our message by who else is preaching it. Now, now let, me, let, let me encourage you. <laughs> May you be encouraged to preach a message that nobody else is preaching. I told you that many times one of these struggles that I have, especially when I go preach in, in places where these messages are unfamiliar. People will often say, can you refer us to a book, Pastor, that has the message that you have just preached? Because they just, they just want to verify if there is anyone popular who's saying the same thing. And, and, and beloved, when you tell them, unfortunately, I didn't read this message from any book, you know, except from the book called the Bible. People don't like that. People don't like that. Because you cannot be telling us such a heavy message without a reference to a book written by a popular author that they can have confidence in so that they can actually veto your message. So the, the, the problem, beloved, that we have is many of us are scared of being lonely, lonely voices. And this morning, I'm, I'm going to attempt to encourage you to be a lonely voice. Praise God. It is no longer about what is trending on social media. It is about what God is saying. In actual fact, most of the trending messages on social media may not necessarily be what God is saying to us. It is a serious matter. It's a serious matter. Let me tell you something. To be clear, we don't preach for honorarium. Amen. We don't preach for love offerings. But the giving of love offerings when you have been ministered to by the word of God, especially for a visiting preacher, it's something that should happen normally. Are you hearing me? It's an honor. We need to honor. That is why I fight for that. That everyone who comes to minister into this house, especially guest ministers, they must be honored. But are you aware that there are times when we go to places and preach messages that people don't even want to hear about. And they will even withhold the love of her. I've experienced that many times. When, 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 <laughs> when you give a prophetic word, here's a statement that I've come, Pastor Njiro, this is a statement that I've come to, 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 to actually treat with great caution. When you are visiting some, uh, when you are invited to minister the word of God, Babukbek, and then someone whispers into your ear and they say to you, please give us an uplifting message. That statement can mean a lot of things. Please give us an uplifting message. I've learned that that statement means a lot of things and sometimes it is a statement that says please say nice things i'm going to show you later on in the scripture it's not something new it's an old phenomenon say something nice and these people don't care what is god saying but you must say something nice and i want you to be weary of a situation where you are pushed into a corner as a prophetic voice in this hour where you have to say nice things. Hallelujah. That is why we need to be bold and faithful. Praise God. Because saying something that God is not saying, beloved, it means compromise. You know, do you know that you can say the right things from the pulpit when God has never sent you to say them? 
And it's no longer about the correctness of the message in terms of theological accuracy, but it's about the seasonality of the message. Is it a word in season? Praise God. So these are things that we need to watch out for. And, and Jeremiah well, uh, was so aggrieved by his message, he began to search in his heart, Lord, am I saying the right things? Why are people turning against me? Jeremiah is not the type of a preacher that you will invite to your conference. Hallelujah. And I can tell you that if Jeremiah was alive, he will not be invited to any conference or to any church. Because people knew that he will just stand up and say, Babylonians are coming. Babylonians are coming. Repent. Repent. Babylonians are coming. 70 years of captivity is upon you if you don't repent. No one wants to hear that in a conference. No one wants it's amazing that people want to have good times up until Babylonians arrive. They, 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 they don't want anyone to spoil the part. It's, it's almost like they're saying, listen, if, if, if the Babylonians are coming, please at least allow me to party for the last time. Let me just have good times. Don't bother me. And that is what is happening in this generation. That is what is happening in this generation. So that is why then Jeremiah, at some point, he himself was disillusioned by the message that he carried and then he, he even he even asked god lord sometimes i decide to keep quiet but you push me to say some things maybe i don't know Knox, do you have a mic with you uh, jeremiah chapter 20 verses 14 to 18 i want us to see this jeremiah 20 Verses 14 to 18, this is the message, this is the passage where he even curses the day he was born. Cursed be the day I was born. Maybe let me interrupt you. Where is the Lord? When the message that the preacher carries is so heavy, he is hated by government, he's hated by parents, hated by siblings, hated by neighbors, hated by society. Wherever you go, you know, <laughs> this this was this was the situation wherever other preachers went red carpets were being rolled out but wherever jeremiah went people were spitting people were spitting at him people were throwing stones at him and then he goes home and says lord why come how come i'm not like that other preacher there who is trending on social media. How, how come, Lord, I'm not like the other guy who, who, has, who has one million followers? How come, Lord, how come I'm never invited uh, uh, just to give a word, you know, in, in powerful, powerful places, you know, where celebrities gather? What's wrong with my message? He was aggrieved by the message he carried to a point when he says, cursed is the day I was born. Can you, can you continue, Knox? May the day my mother bore me not be blessed. Mm. Cursed be the man who brought my father the news, mm. who made him very glad, saying, mm. A child is born to you, a son. May that man be like the towns the Lord overthrew without pity. My God. May he hear wailing in the morning, mm. a, battle, a battle cry at noon. Mm. Mm. For he did not kill me in the womb, for with my mother as my grave, mm, mm. her womb enlarged forever. Mm, mm. Why did I ever come out of the womb my to God. see trouble and sorrow and to end men and to end my days in shame? Listen to that. Every ministry day ends in shame. That's what I'm you, 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 other preachers are getting big love offerings whenever they preach the word of God. Jeremiah's day ends in shame every time he opens his mouth. And that is why he says, cursed is the day I was born. He even says, why did I survive? I wish I had died in my mother's womb. But after saying all those negative things, Jeremiah gets out of that dark place. Continues to preach. That is why this morning I want to talk, to talk about what, what does it take for somebody to speak as negatively as that and yet still says, but Father, your will be done. Your will be done. You know, Bob Machola once told me there was a guy 
who, who, he, he was also a preacher of the gospel, not a popular preacher. He, 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 God was using him to confront all these things that are happening in our, in our society and, and he will confront immorality, confront all kinds of things. And, and, <laughs> and he was aggrieved because people don't want, did, did, they didn't want his ministry, basically. And then Baba Chola says, this guy was ahead praying in the morning. And we, we, we can tell it's tough. It's tough, Masalwan. How because you do you, you cannot help but compare. How come this one is surrounded by an entourage of believers? And whenever Preachers have imbong. You know, when they take to the pulpit, they are even poets. They are unilating as a man of God comes to the pulpit. But this one comes to the pulpit. Everyone says, <laughs> You know. And, and, and Jeremiah is saying, Lord, what's going on here? What's going on here? But he did not quit. Turn to anybody and say, Jeremiah did not quit. So please don't quit. I like the idea of asking God questions, but you don't allow the questions you have to stop your ministry. I love that. So it does not mean that we don't meet up with moments of disillusionment. It does not mean that we don't ask questions. It does not mean that we pretend like we're comfortable. No, we're not. But we do not allow our discomfort to stop our ministry. Praise the name of Jesus. We, 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 we continue to minister the word of God. That unpopular word, we minister it, beloved, even if nobody wants to hear it because of the following reasons. I want you to understand the following attributes that Jeremiah had. The attributes of Jeremiah and his ministry. Number one, he was called by God. Hallelujah. It's a simple statement, but it's a powerful statement. He was called by God. He was called by God. This is Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. It says, before I formed you in your mother's womb. This is powerful. His calling was preconceptual. Praise God. Before he was even conceived, Jeremiah was called. And I want you to understand, beloved, that your calling did not begin the day you received Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your calling, your calling was crafted by God even before you were conceived in your mother's womb. The day you got saved is the day when it actually dawned on you that you were going astray, but now you need to fulfill your mandate. Praise the name of Jesus. Please understand that our callings don't begin the day we got saved. God called you before he formed you in your mother's womb. And then it continues to say, before I was born, I was sanctified. My God. Praise God. Hallelujah. He says, I was ordained as a prophet to the nations. All this happens before you were born. So in other words, in heaven, there are documents about your life that enumerate everything that you need to do. Before you are born. Before, there are documents that attest to your life as to how it should go. Praise God. And that is why, again, you know, they, they, this, is, this, is, this is a very powerful thing that every believer must understand. This is what it says in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30. And we know that all things work for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Praise God. Everything works for the good. You must understand that persecution, hatred, Onslaughts that you will experience, beloved. Everything works for the good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. When does this calling happen? Listen to this, verse 29. Those God foreknew, he also predestined. This is before you were born. You were foreknown by God that you will be in South Africa, in KZN, in Deben at this time. It was foreknown by God. If it was foreknown by God, he even foreknew those that will persecute you. Hallelujah. He knows he foreknew your haters. Before people started hating you, God foreknew that you would be hated. Praise God. And then those he predestined, he also ensured that they are conformed to the image of his son. So that 
Jesus might be the firstborn among many brethren. And moreover, the one who predestined us, he called us. And the one who called us, he justified us. And the one who justified us, he glorified us. There are stages here, beloved. If you, if you, if you want to be glorified, you will have to go through persecution. Hallelujah. And that is why Paul says, <laughs> I, I, I want to know Christ. I want to partake in his suffering so that I may partake in his resurrection. You cannot jump the process. You cannot just glory in the resurrection when you're not willing to go through his suffering. Praise God. So I want you to be encouraged. Suffering is part and parcel of this package. Hallelujah. So a, a Jeremiah type in our generation is a believer who is not going to be offended by persecution. Because he knows that they have not been called by men, but they have been called by God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you have been anointed by God. You are not anointed by men. I, I, I was telling someone that it's amazing that many of us, we fight for ordination. Please, pastor, ordain me. Are you aware that you can do great things for God even before you are ordained? In actual fact, ordination should be a confirmation of what is already happening. Ordination does not start a ministry. Ordination affirms. Ordination confirms that there is a ministry here. So it is a wrong thinking to say, I want to be ordained so that I can do ministry. Because you were ordained before you were born. You were called before you were born. Heavens know your calling before you... Uh, uh, you know why I'm saying this? I've met ministers who say, you know, I cannot move because I've not been ordained. What if you are in a desert when there is no one who's going to ordain you? Or ordain you? What, 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 what if you are in a place where no, there's no apostle? <laughs> no one is there to ordain you, but God says, I'm calling you to be a prophet to this nation. Are you hearing me, beloved? We don't even hear of Jeremiah having a group of elders laying hands on him, saying, we're releasing you as a prophet into the nations. We don't hear about that. Why? Because he was going with an assurance that God has called me. Are you hearing me, beloved? And I'm not promoting a situation of rebellion. No. And I'm not promoting a situation where people are not accountable. And I do value ordination. We do need ordination. Hear me and hear me well. But don't think that, that your ministry starts when you're ordained. It's not in scripture. Praise God. So I want us, therefore, by the time we say we release you, please, you must have an assurance that you've been released by God already. Praise God. The reason why we are saying that is because many of us look to men for release. Hallelujah. Do that. Whatever God has called you to do, do it. Praise God. Now, here is the thing. The, 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 the problem with people who are not called by God but are running with messages is that uh, at some point you will quit. You see, you must have an assurance even when someone wakes you up at night that God called me and I don't doubt it. Praise the Lord. And when you have that divine confidence that I'm called by God, you're not going to quit just because someone is spitting into you for, for the message you preach. People who are very offended easily, easily offended, are people who don't have assurity or assurance of their calling. And we need to go back to our closets and hear him say, I release you and I'm calling you to be a prophet to this nation. You must, you must have that assurance. That is why it was important even for the disciples to hear a voice say, this is my son, with whom I'm well pleased. Obey him. Praise God. Affirmed by God. Hallelujah. Many times it's amazing how we fight for affirmation by people when we should be getting our affirmation primarily from our closets. Praise, our, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The second point about Jeremiah is that the truth he proclaimed transformed him first. Uh, one of the reasons why a lot of us quit, we find it so easy to quit, 
is because we are proclaiming messages that have not transformed us. Many, many times you meet a believer with powerful revelation. But when you observe closely how they live, you realize that it's the opposite of what they are saying. The way they carry themselves, the way they conduct themselves, it's like this word is for, the word they carry is for conferences. It is not for personal transformation. Let me tell you something, beloved. It is a powerful thing when you allow God to use you, to, to impact you with the word before you go out and declare it. Praise the name of Jesus. And this, this is what maybe Nox, if we can go to this one, Jeremiah 20 verse 9. I want us to see this in Jeremiah 20 verse 9. But if I say I will not mention his word mm. or speak anymore in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, mm -hmm. a fire shut up in my bones. I'm weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. Let me say this to you. Before the fire is in your mouth, it must be in your bones. There are too many people who have fire in their mouths, but it is not shut up in their bones. In other words, I must contain the fire within myself before that fire is in the mouth. That's why the Bible says from the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Many of us are declaring things that are not overflowing within us. And we wonder why we betray God after preaching powerful things. People, and, 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 and this is so deceptive in the sense that because of the powerful revelations you carry, people think you are mature. People think that you are grown. People think you are a seasoned believer. When all you have is fire in your mouth, but fire is not shut up in your bones. So that is why Jeremiah says, this is the fire that is, in other words, it, it, it burns so strong within me, I end up speaking. I don't speak when there is nothing burning within me. It burns within me first, and therefore I speak. So I want us to rectify that. Pray that there be fire within you before there is fire in your mouth. And many times, many of us, we want fire, 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 fire in my mouth, oh God. No, no, no. Let it consume you first. And I want us to look at this. Uh, this is powerful. In First John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. This is what it says. First John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. That, that, yes, go ahead, go ahead. That which was from the beginning, mm. which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, mm. which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. Hallelujah. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. Mm -hmm. And we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. Praise God. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard mm -hmm. so, that you, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son jesus christ in summary john is saying the word we're proclaiming to you is the word that we have seen with our eyes so revelation revelation and the word that we proclaim to you is the word that we have touched experiential knowledge in other words i'm not just carrying head knowledge as i declare the word of god i'm not full of theology I'm not declaring the word of God just from an academic point of view, from a theological point of view. I've experienced it. We've touched this word. And then he says, this word lived amongst us. In other words, the word impacted us. And that word is what we proclaim to you now. It's not a second-hand experience. Do you know that there are sermons that we're recycling? When it has no impact on your life whatsoever. You are just recycling it. You, re, you know, somebody said it, you repeat it. Someone said it, you, but it has no impact on you. It sounded nice and that is why it's worth repeating. I pray that the word may be something you touch. May the word be something you see personally, personally. May the word live in you so that by the time you proclaim it, you proclaim it from the position of power. Praise the name of Jesus. The problem with proclamation is that sometimes it takes an orator to proclaim. Someone who's gifted, someone who's eloquent, someone who's articulate can be a powerful proclaimer when they have not been impacted. I said to you, we are not postmen. Remember that? I once ministered to you a word that 
you as a child of God, you as a messenger of the gospel, you are not a postman. Because a postman can carry mails that he is not affected by. He just carries a bag full of mail. And then he just leaves it in different post boxes. He doesn't care the messages that are in those mails. Some of those mails contain letters of retrenchment. He, he drops the letter and he moves on. And as he drops the letter, someone is crying. Because it's a retrenchment letter. And the postman is gone to another address. That is not us. That's not us. We're not postmen. The messages we carry impact us first before we give them to others. Praise the name of Jesus. So I pray that you may stand in God's presence and stay in the presence of God so that he can touch you, he can mold you, shape you, so that by the time you proclaim it, you speak from a position of experience and an encounter with God. Hallelujah. Now, this is, this, is, this is what we need to be aware of. Why is this important? The Bible tells us that in, 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 in Matthew 13, verse 21, the Bible tells us that the time of persecution will come because of the word. Let me say that again. If you, are, if you have received the truth, you can be guaranteed that persecution is coming. I'm not trying to discourage you. Please don't stop coming to church. But I want you to understand that there is a level of attack that everyone who hears the truth will experience. Because according to scripture, the Bible says, for the sake of the word, persecution came. In other words, for every truth you receive, the devil wants to interrogate how far you understand it. How, do, how do, is it entrenched in your heart? Do you understand the word that you have received? So the enemy will test everything that you have received. So now it's, that is why it's so dangerous for us, beloved, to, 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 to carry truths that we don't understand. Hallelujah. To carry truths that are not impacting us. Because when persecution comes, you'll be found flat-footed. Praise God. Now here is the thing. Paul says in Galatians 2, verse 20, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. The life I live in the body, I live it by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So in other words, the idea here is that the Jeremiah of our time must be crucified by the word of God. Allow the word of God to kill you so that you will preach it as a dead man. Hallelujah. What happens when you are speaking to a dead man? That dead man will not be affected. He will not, be, he will not quit. Why? Because I am dead already. I'm dead already. You can, you can speak all the vulgar you want, but I'm dead already. Therefore, I'm not going to quit. We have a lot of people who are still in the flesh preaching the word. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you die. Hallelujah. Die to your old nature. Die to your pride. Die to your arrogance. Die to your celebrity status. Praise God. We are not celebrities, but we are preachers of the gospel. Amen. The third issue that I want to raise about Jeremiah is that he did not base his ministry on presupposition about what God is saying. There was no guesswork about what God was saying. Jeremiah knew that he knew that he knew that God spoke. Hallelujah. Maybe Knox, if you can just uh, see this in Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 7 to 9, so that you appreciate that uh, 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 please, Bazalwan, it's, so, it's not going to be easy for you to remain faithful to presuppositions. It, you have to receive a word from God for you to be faithful. If, if you are still guessing it, you will quit. If you are not sure of it, you will quit. But I pray that we come to a place where we know that we know that God has spoken to us. And therefore, Whatever, brings, whatever the enemy brings our way, we will not quit because we know God has spoken. Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 7 to 9. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. Mm. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. My God. Do not be afraid of them, mm. for I am with you and will rescue you, declares mm. the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise then, God. Yes, ma'am. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I love that. 
I love that. When you preach a word that God has put in your mouth. That is why, therefore, I, 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 I pray that you may, <laughs> you may read books, but read them cautiously. Because as we read books and Christian literature, many of us are looking for messages that we can proclaim. Whereas the idea here, beloved, please don't undermine your closet. Don't undermine your closet. You don't have to, 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 to check what is T.T. Jake saying these days. And then you, you parrot it. It's a question of sitting in the presence of the Most High God. And saying, Father, in actual fact, many of you are robbing us. Of the things that God is actually wanting to download to you. But you are busy checking what is trending on social media so that you can parrot it. When, when there are fresh things from God that we are supposed to be receiving from you. And I pray that you do not rob us. Go into his presence. I love this. He has put a word into my mouth. I did not Google it. It was not Googled. But a word was put in my mouth. Praise the Lord. You understand that my message is so accomplished. Neza Barcelona. So when I know church GPT on it, where a sermon can be just prepared for you by artificial intelligence, you can just print a repentance. Church GPT will prepare a full sermon on repentance. If you are a good orator, you take what Church GPT has given you. You come to the pulpit and then you say it and then we say, wow. When it's not from God, it is from artificial intelligence. Notice that church, church GPT is also very theologically accurate. Yeah. Very theologically accurate. But here's the thing, beloved. I want us to stop short-circuiting the process of spending time in God's presence. Because every time you run to church GPT, you are cutting the process. You are short-circuiting the process. Please, please pay the price. Pay the school fees of being in the presence of the Lord. Just tarry in his presence. Hallelujah. Tarry in his presence. I do understand there are things we can Google. We can, we can search for certain information, beloved. But if you want to wait for this season, it is not in church GPT. It is in the presence of God. And the danger of using all these tools, chat GPT, for preparing messages, is that you will stop spending time in God's presence. And you'll spend more time with tools that are just supposed to help you in certain aspects, but not they're not supposed to replace your devotional time. Hallelujah. So I, I beseech you by the message of the Lord, go back to the presence. The word was put in my mouth by God. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to compare this. There is another group of prophets that is doing things differently. Same, same generation. Jeremiah 23, verses 15 to 17. This is another group of people. They are doing things differently. And you need to choose in this generation which group of prophets are you going to be. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty says concerning the prophets. Mm. I will make them eat bitter food and drink poisoned water. Mm. Because from the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has spread throughout the land. Mm. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. Mm -hmm. They will fill you with false hopes. Mm -hmm. They speak visions from their own minds, yeah. not from the mouth of the Lord. Yeah, he's alone. They speak things from their own minds. So a prophet can imagine a message <laughs> and then proclaims it. And we all say amen when God has not sent them. That is why this season we're not calling you just to be a Jeremiah, a proclaimer. But we're also calling you to discern as a listener. Praise God. So the responsibility is on both parties. Those who are proclaiming and those that are receiving. Be able to see that this is a figment of someone's imagination. Praise God. And I beseech you by the message of the Lord. If ever there was a time when, when your discernment index should be high, it is now. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, 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 verse 17 knocks. They keep saying to those who despise me, mm. the Lord says, you will have peace. Really, this is dangerous, man. They, they, they give false assurance to people. Because this is what people want to... Listen, the Babylonians are coming. But these men are prophesying peace. Just like we have in this time, beloved, we're saying there is a time of tribulation coming. And people are saying, no, no, no. That time has already happened. It happened in 8070. When the Romans destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. That's the message that is being. In other words, people are saying peace. The next thing that is going to happen is for Jesus just to come and establish his kingdom. Yeah, we are living in times of peace. Are you hearing me? They are preaching or they are declaring their imaginations. It is so important that you don't go around giving people false hopes. It is so tempting to give people false hopes. And, and, and here's what I'm it is so tempting because there is pressure. As I said to you, there are places you go to where people will say, please give us hope. And I want to say to you, by the way, that uh, the audience in scripture does not determine the message. It's only in our generation that we're beginning to see a situation where you are told by the audience, Pastor, this is what we want to hear from you. And God is asking in the same passage, when did these people sit in my council? Please read the whole passage. God is asking a question, when did they sit in my council so that they would receive a message that they're running with? None of them. God says, Jeremiah, you are the only one who's been to my council. I don't know how, how come there are so many preachers when you are the only one who's been to my council. Now, beloved, please, man, let's, let, may, may we be not found saying things that we have not derived from the council of God. May you be known in the council of heaven. Praise God. May you be known in the council of heaven so that even as you proclaim the word of God, heaven knows that you have been to God's presence. I was to manga. You are not self-appointed. Praise God. So uh, please, let's, 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 have you finished it next? Yes, go ahead. And to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say, no harm will come to you. Mm, mm. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord? Oh my God. To see or to hear his word. My God. Who has listened and heard his word? My God. Beloved, sit in the council. Sit in the council. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name that none of us, none of us will be going around dreaming things and then preaching things that we are dreaming about. Hallelujah. Sit in the council. Turn to your neighbor and say, sit in the council of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please be careful. We have motivational speakers in our time. And many of them have not sat in the council of God. But they are popular. Why? Because they know that encouragement and motivation is like our opium as a generation. There is too much depression in our generation. There is too much anxiety. And every encourager, even if they are from the pit of hell, we will embrace. Because it's the opium of our time. We need it. It's like a drug. Such was the time in, in, in Jeremiah's time. So I want us to, to be very careful, beloved. May the Lord help us to spend time in God's counsel. And here, 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 here this, this is a serious thing, by the way. Uh, if you hear of bitter waters, I'll give them bitter waters. Do you know that that judgment is going to come upon the earth? One third, according to the book of Revelation, chapter 8, verses 10 to 11. When you get home, please get, get, just read that. One third of the waters of the earth will, is going to turn into bitter waters. And the Bible tells us that the many will die as they drink that water. Do you know that that wormwood, that wormwood situation, is it's God's judgment because nations have embraced false prophets. When, when you see one third of rivers, one third of drinking waters turning into bitter waters, it is God's judgment for embracing false prophets. And that is why the judgment upon false prophets in the Old Testament was to make them drink all. When they made Jesus drink that bitter vinegar, they were actually accusing him of being a false prophet. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you may fight for your generation. May you fight for your generation so that they do not drink bitter waters in the spirit. May they not drink bitter waters in the spirit when you are a well of living waters. Praise the Lord. 
You are a well. You are supposed to be a spring of living waters so that they don't drink bitter waters. Hallelujah. And here, here, here is another thing, beloved. Let me, let me, let me just conclude this message. And uh, uh, Jeremiah was not moved by financial and material benefits. Powerful, a powerful thing happened when the Babylonians finally came. When the Babylon, Babylonians finally came, Nebuchadnezzar was told by some of the Jews that had defected to Babylon that there is a prophet here who for years has been warning the nation of Judah that you are coming. And Nebuchadnezzar says, I want to see that prophet. He sends his generals, army generals, and they take Jeremiah and Nebuchadnezzar passes a message and he says, I'm taking all of Judah into captivity, but I will spare Jeremiah. An ungodly king says, I will spare Jeremiah. Not only will I spare him, I will give him food rations. I will ensure that every month Jeremiah is taken care of. Let me tell you something. Truth is associated with a lot of inconvenience. Truth is associated with a lot of persecution. But there is a God in heaven who sees the misery you are going through because of the truth you stand for and he will reward you. You don't get rewarded for the truth instantly. But it is only at the end that the truth triumphs over lies. Praise the name of Jesus. So that is why allow yourself to go through the valleys of inconvenience because of the truth that you stand for but when you emerge on the other side of the valley there is a god in heaven who's waiting with the reward i pray that you may receive a reward based on the truth you stood for so this is an ungodly king he says oh so this guy has been warning you that i'm coming but you did not listen to him and he says i'm going to put you to the slaughter you you, you i'm going to put you to the sword is that a guy i'll kill you because you did not listen. He warned you that I was coming, but you did not listen. And then says, Jeremiah, I want you to choose. You come to Babylon with me, I will take care of you. But if you choose to remain in Judah, I will still send food rations to you. Yes, Abatandia? No, 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 no. There is a God in heaven who is just. There is a God in heaven whose, whose throne is founded upon justice and righteousness. You will not stand for the truth without being rewarded by him. Praise the name of Jesus. He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Please, please. God will even use ungodly people. He will use even ungodly people to ensure that those that have stood for righteousness are rewarded justly. Hallelujah. So please bear with it. These skirmishes that the enemy brings on your way, these are just skirmishes for a season. They are just for a season. Hallelujah. And, and that is why in the same Psalms, he says, though I walk through the valley of, sh of the shadow of death, your, I will fear no evil because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Praise the name of Jesus. In the same breath, he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. Now, here's the point I'm making. When, when, when Nebuchadnezzar had sent a message to Jeremiah that I will take care of you. Don't have to worry about food. You don't have to worry even about housing. Don't worry about anything. Jeremiah still says, but I have a word for you. Nebuchadnezzar, I have a word for you. God is going to judge you too. Your kingdom will collapse. There is a northern kingdom in the form of the Persians and the Medes that is going to come and destroy your king. At that point, I'm sure some of his friends, Jer uh, can you imagine Jeremiah's friends say, hey, hey, do, 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 do. <laughs> just cool it. <laughs> just cool it. This man is giving you silver and gold, you know. And uh, you know, at least, you, hey, Jerry, Jerry. They, they were not even calling him Jeremiah. Maybe they were calling, hey, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Listen. Shoes. Shoes, Jerry. You have done enough. You have done enough. He's giving you money. He's giving you food rations. You know, you don't have to. No, no. Jeremiah says, no, no, no. In actual fact, I have a book that I have written about his judgment. It's not just, it's not just a, 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 a one-page letter. The Bible tells us that a book about the judgment of Babylon was written. 
Jeremiah did not shy away. And he says, this book must be read publicly to the hearing of Nebuchadnezzar. Hallelujah. He's carrying his silver and gold. <laughs> but he says, I have a book of judgment against you. What kind of a prophet is this? <laughs> eh? What kind of a prophet is this? You, you and I, they just give you a hundred thousand rand tender. Just one hundred thousand rand tender. And you are quiet. You are quiet. You see, a premier comes and says, no, 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 no. Just space saloon. We'll quieten a prophet. Will silence a man or a woman of God. This place is just a saloon. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. I pray that you be the voice, even if they want to bless you. That is why Jeremiah was very careful about these things. Jeremiah, every time Jeremiah was supposed to give a prophetic word to the king, he will insist, please keep your silver and gold. <laughs> So that I can prophesy without disturbance. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't want to prophesy while there is things, things that are glittering. So that I don't say what I need to say. Praise God. So Jeremiah will prophesy. I, I, I remember when he prophesied many, many tekel to Belshazzar. He prophesied that your kingdom is going to collapse. The Medes and the Persians are, are coming here to top your kingdom. And then, and then, and then <laughs> it, it, it's, it's amazing Barcelona, because God rewards the truth Jeremiah had said I don't want anything from you because the word that I'm going to give is the word you may not like praise God I don't want your love offering after he said your kingdom will collapse it's funny Belshazzar says I want to appreciate you for telling me the truth I still insist on giving you what kind of a king will do that I'm still going to give you silver and gold. Even though you told me that my kingdom is collapsing. At least you are not like these liars. Yeah. You are not like these liars. Because you see, listen, listen, listen. If you are a, a compromising prophet, I said to you the other day, politicians know that you are compromising. They know. They know. They are prophets. They are prophets that are compromising, that are sitting with powerful people. They are in a compromised state. And when there is a crisis, those leaders will not look for people that are compromising in their circles. They will look for you as you stand for the truth. And I pray that you be the answer to our nation. Praise the name of Jesus. And so if something similar happened. <laughs> I love, I love Jeremiah. Just love Jeremiah. Something similar happened. You see, when politicians are in trouble, they know who are compromisers. Even in the house of the Lord. They know. So that is why, please, don't be, don't, be, don't, be, don't be deceived by the tenders they are giving to you. They know that you are gone. You are gone. Your ministry is gone. They know it. There was a situation when King Ahab wanted to invade another nation because the land they occupied belonged to Israel. So King Ahab consults with King Jehoshaphat. He says, what do you think? Should I go and take over that land. Will God grant me favor if I do that? King Jehoshaphat says something very powerful. He says, can you inquire from a prophet? Amen. Notice that there were prophets that were surrounding Ahab. benefits. Uh -huh. So, so, who King Jehoshaphat, he looks at all these prophets that are surrounding King Ahab. <laughs> no. Can we find another prophet? <laughs> Can we, and that's an indictment, by the way, against us who have compromised. Yeah? Can I just give you an advice? May the Lord help us on this one. My advice to you is that if you are called as a prophetic voice, be very sparing in the time you, pay, you spend with powerful people. Don't insist on always being in their entourage. Because that will take ministry away from you. You, you will lose your cutting edge. You will lose your cutting edge. You need to be in a place of isolation. You need to be in the counsel of God so that you know what to say when you are with them.
But if you're always playing golf with them, you're always dining with them, you're always in their parties, there is something about the anointing that is beginning to disappear from you. So that is why when Jehoshaphat walks into that situation, he says, no, no, no. These prophets that are surrounding you, no, man. Can we find another prophet? And guess who they went to? There's a man called Micaiah. <laughs> Ahab says, ah, I don't like this guy. There is a prophet here yeah, somewhere in this village. <laughs> His name is Micaiah. I don't like him because he never say anything good about me. <laughs> in other words, I like these guys because every time they prophesy, they say, oh, hey, long live Ahab. We will see you prospering. We see you taking over kingdoms. In actual fact, those prophets had already prophesied to Micaiah, you are going to take over that land. You're going to take over the land. They already said that to Ahab. So, Jehoshaphat is descending. These men are, said, are saying what the, 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 the ears, the, 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 these ears, itching ears want to hear. Um, and, and so, no, let's find another one. So, Micaiah comes. So, listen to the story. <laughs> when, 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 when a man is sent to fetch Micaiah from a village, <laughs> praise God. This man whispers to Micaiah, say, you know what, uh, Micaiah, other prophets have already told the king that victory is his. Uh, can you please align? <laughs> try, try to align. What was that? Can you align your prophetic word with what other prophets have said? They want your counsel, but they are telling you what to say. What, 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 what's going on there? You want the counsel from a man of God, but you are busy whispering to the man of God how we should say whatever needs to be said. Be careful. Many of these powerful leaders will come to you looking for a word. And in the meantime, they will send a protocol officer. Eh? They will send a protocol officer. Saying, now, when you are in the presence of uh, 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 the, 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 these big uh, people and, and these political leaders, you say this, you don't say this, you say this, you don't say this. Don't. They will even tell you how to pray. You don't just pray anyhow when you're in parliament. There are things you don't mention when you're in parliament. Mm, no, 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 no. You don't, you don't even touch that they, there is some money that was under the matras. Lord, we repent. No, 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 no. You, you, don't, you don't say those things. No. You don't say those things, and you, when you you don't even mention the ESCOM issue. Uh, no, 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 no. Just, just your prayer must just be be be, be friendly. You know, your 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 prayer must be politically correct. So this is the story they are selling to Micaiah. Hey, Micaiah keeps quiet. He goes there. <laughs> he prophesies. Oh, he, he, Ahab says, "What do you think? Do you think you will win? We will win against this nation." And and, 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 and Micaiah says, no, go, go take over. And then Ahab realizes, no, you're mocking me. <laughs> you're mocking me. You're not telling me the truth. He says, no, I can tell you the truth if you want the truth. In other words, I'm telling you what your protocol officer said I must say. But if you want the truth, let me tell you the truth now. He says, I see a council in heaven. And they are debating how can we entice Ahab to go and attack the nation so that he will be destroyed and then i see i see a lying spirit coming from heaven and this lying spirit is influencing your prophets and that is why they are telling you you are going to be victorious they prophesy under the influence of a lying spirit uh -huh. now there are there are prophetic words that you and i are give are given we have received prophetic words that come from a lying spirit. And we thought, just because they sounded good, we thought they are from God. Listen, not every prophetic word that sounds good is from God. And then Ahab says, but I have a different prophetic word. I see you being, 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 being killed in the battle. That's what I see. I see you being killed. To a point that one of the lying prophets was so cross with Micaiah, he struck him across the face. Says, what am I telling you? Because I was a prophet. No, 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 no. 
And and these things are going to happen. These things are going to and that is why I love I love Micaiah. He is not perturbed with someone has just fagged him in power. Continues to stand. Yeah, yeah, when I get the Jeremiah kind. This is the Jeremiah kind. But thus say the Lord. I'm not gonna be moved. This is what God is saying. I can assure you when Ahab went to battle, the Bible says Ahab, Ahab knew what no. I think Micaiah might be right here. The Bible tells us he tried to even betray Jehoshaphat. He says, you dress like me. <laughs> I mean, I would be dressed in civilian clothes. And then when, 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 when the enemies of Israel came, they, they looked for a king who was dressed in royalty. The moment they discovered it is not Ahab, it is Jehoshaphat, the Bible tells us they retreated. And Ahab thought, yeah, I'm safe. Micaiah, by the way, Micaiah was arrested. Micaiah said, please, if you are not killed today, <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I, I pray that God may raise men and women who are bold. Ahab say, uh, Micaiah says, if you are not killed today, I'm a, I'm a false prophet. <laughs> if today, at the end of the day, you are still alive, please, Tell the whole nation that I'm a false prophet. And they locked him up. He was in prison. So he, he, he then, he, he, Ahab goes into the battle, disguised as a civilian. He betrayed Jehoshaphat. When the enemies of Israel discovered, no, 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 it's not Ahab. The Bible says they retreated. But out of nowhere, one of the enemy's soldiers decided to shoot an arrow randomly. And guess who it hit? Ahab. You cannot undermine the word of the Lord. What God has spoken will never go back to him void. It will accomplish everything that he has sent it for. Everything that the Lord speaks. That is why it is so important not to carry favor with politicians. Speak the word. Because when they die in the battle, someone is going to come back to you and say, do you lie to us? Because when ultimately judah was taken to captivity all the prophets all the prophets were captured but jeremiah survived praise the name of jesus so i pray in jesus mighty name that you be the prophet of this hour just stand on your feet the name jeremiah